So I realised that I market myself as being a medical school YouTuber. I haven't actually made a video about medical school in a very long time and today I thought I would continue that trend and not talk about medical school. The reason for not wanting to do it today is that I've just been really busy with medical school at the minute and I just wanted to do something different today. Last week I had my prescribing exam so what that means is if I passed it it means that I will be able to prescribe medication when I graduate, so that's very exciting. If you do want to hear me talk about medicine, I was actually a guest on my friend's podcast, The Coloured Prescription, and on the episode we're talking about mental health, our own experiences, stigma of mental illness within the healthcare environment, and also just a little rant about uh, the quality of psychiatry teaching in medical schools. I think it's like less than 5% of medical students will declare that they have a disability. Yeah. It's like, where are they? Where are we? They, we weed them out somehow, some way. Yeah. Like an uh, educational system that's very hostile. If you're interested in any of those things, please give it a listen. I'll put a link down below. But yeah, I thought today we'd talk about something different. Today's video is episode one of a new series I want to start called The Unwind Diaries. And it's effectively just going to be me talking about my hobbies, my interests, things that I like to do to kind of unwind from a busy working week. So today I thought I would start the series by talking about video games. It's been about a year now since the first national lockdown due to coronavirus. In this last year, video games have basically been my saving grace. This time last year was obviously very stressful for a lot of people. The year continued to be very stressful. And I just found that video games were always reliable in helping me relax. And I want to dedicate this video to my love for video games. Take a shot every time I say video games. <laughs> Often the TV shows and movies I watch are usually quite serious. I quite like dramas and documentaries. So I found that during the kind of early stages of the lockdown and the pandemic, I was getting really overwhelmed with watching TV and movies and I just needed something completely different. Recently, I've discovered this small community on YouTube for cozy gaming. So I guess the idea of cozy gaming is playing games, not for a competitive reason, but purely just to kind of unwind, usually games that don't have an objective or an end point and are purely just there for you to have fun, relax and yeah, be cosy. I just want to recommend two channels that I've been watching a lot of recently that I'd highly recommend if this is something that you're interested in. The first one is Sana Storia. Uh, she the first one is Sana Storia. She talks a lot about JRPGs and some games that I haven't really heard of before. So. It's been really interesting to kind of hear about the more kind of hidden games that are out there. I really like the way that she records the audio for her videos. She's got a really good professional mic setup. Um, I think she does some Twitch streaming as well. Um, but in particular, I really enjoy listening to her videos. If I go out on a walk, they kind of allow themselves to kind of be like a podcast. She's got some really good recommendations there. So I'd highly recommend checking out her channel if you want have a look at some completely new games that you may not have heard of. And the second channel that I've been watching a lot of is a gamer called Kennedy. Um, again, I really enjoy the aesthetic and the way that she films her videos. It's very cosy, really nice colour grading, and just generally I love the aesthetic of the videos. It's a lot of like very soft, muted, natural colours, which I just love um, to watch. I don't know, there's something very calming about kind of like beiges and browns for me. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but she's also doing a Stardew Valley Let's Play. I've never actually played Stardew Valley, so it's been a really nice way to kind of get into the game and learn a bit about it as well from someone that is a veteran in the game. So today I thought I would share some of my favourite cosy games. Some of the games I've picked may seem a little bit weird to be considered cosy because some of them involve fighting, but I'll explain why I consider them cosy. It's not because I find violence relaxing or anything. There is a reason to my madness. Predominantly the games that I'm going to be talking about are on my Nintendo Switch and I thought I would show you some of my favourite accessories and things that I've done with my Nintendo Switch. This is probably my favourite piece of technology that I've bought over the last few years and I've just had so much fun with it um, and it's really helped me a lot in this last year in particular. So originally I got the light blue version and I actually got it on eBay. Um, I was really surprised with how cheap I got it for and I thought it was going to be a scam or something but it was actually just a very lucky offer. I did put a skin on it um, and that was not a cosy experience at all, I'll tell you that. 
I think I did an okay job. It's kind of only just at the bottom, you can see little bits of blue. But usually I have it in a case, which is the next accessory I want to talk about. I'm a really big fan of this official Nintendo flip case. Really good for anyone that wants a compact, minimal case with good protection. It also closes magnetically, which I really like, so it's really secure. So you know you can put it in your bag without it flipping out and scratching the screen. And it's really easy to kind of take out your bag when you're on the bus. Um, without having to kind of fiddle with any other zips and cases, you literally just pop it out, flip the case, you're ready to start playing. And then the last accessory I'm going to talk about is this Bluetooth dongle to allow you to connect your Bluetooth headphones to your Switch. Um, it's really annoying that this feature isn't built into the Switch already because it does have native Bluetooth, so you do need to buy a dongle. Um, but I'd highly recommend it if you're into more immersive gaming. Some of the games I'm going to talk about really do have amazing soundtracks, and I think it really does help to have the headphones in. Um, so this was a very cheap one. The one downside to this is that it doesn't fit with my case. So I did have to buy a very small USB-C extender, uh, which was very cheap, but again, just slightly annoying having to have it. Um, it does look a little bit ugly when it's kind of put together like this, but at the end of the day, it's functional, and that's all that matters. The most recent game that I've been playing at the minute is Mario Tennis Aces, and the reason I consider this to be a very cosy game is that there is just something so relaxing about a tennis rally. It's going back and forth and then eventually winning the point. There's something really satisfying as well about the sound design of the game. Hearing the ball being hit and going across the court. I, I can't describe it any other way than just satisfying. <laughs> So the game does have a story mode which has some bosses and some random challenges alongside normal tennis matches which has been quite good fun as well. But I think where this game really shines is this online community where people are incredibly good. And I guess this is the element of the game where it's perhaps not as cosy but it is so much fun. I think the best way to describe the online community is that it feels like you're playing a fighting game. Toadette is the new Nina Williams. There's a lot of strategy involved in this game a lot of reading your opponent, I guess like in normal tennis as well. Uh, also, it's got a great selection of Mario characters. Very happy to see my boy Waluigi there. <laughs> Waluigi. The next game I want to talk about is one that I've talked about on this channel quite a bit already, something that you probably won't be surprised to hear me say, but it's Animal Crossing. I've been a huge fan of Animal Crossing way back when, when I had a Nintendo DS and Animal Crossing Wild World and I've kind of been playing all the handheld versions of the game ever since. It came out at a very important time for me, um, and I guess important time for a lot of people in that it was there, I guess this time last year, at the beginning of the first national lockdown because of the pandemic. So a lot of people were stuck inside, indoors. You know, there was a real lack of routine, and I think that was quite stressful for a lot of people. I know I certainly found that quite stressful. And Animal Crossing was my knight in shining armor in that, it gave me something to do every day, which sounds really silly, but it was a really enjoyable experience to sit down with my housemates whilst we were locked inside the house, you know, seeing what's in the shop, going to the beach, just walking around and just chilling outside during a time where we couldn't. I'd say the one kind of stressful thing about Animal Crossing New Horizons is that because of its like massive influence now on social media and the ability to terraform and decorate. There is this huge emphasis on having the perfect town and that had been a little bit stressful and completely ruined the cozy vibe for me. But once I kind of got over that and just accepted that I'm not gonna try and make my town look very perfect and aesthetic, I was then able to get back into the general cozy vibe of Animal Crossing. The next game I wanna talk about, again, may not seem like a cozy game, but I have had so much fun with it and that is Dragon Quest XI. I've never played a Dragon Quest game before. I actually haven't had that many experience either with any JRPGs, but this game has been immensely fun and I think it's been designed so well and it's probably one of the best looking games on the Nintendo Switch at the minute. It's not a Nintendo Switch exclusive, it's available on consoles and PC as well if you have those consoles, but there's just something so nice about having it in your hand, being able to play this amazing story just while you're like chilling like on the bus or you know in bed and stuff. So. I've really enjoyed that aspect of it. The game has really bright and funny characters. The dialogue is absolutely hilarious at times. Okay, darlings, I'll see you when you're finished here in town. I need to go and see a man about a... 
<laughs> Ciao for now. It's got voice acting, both in English and Japanese. I really enjoy the turn-based battle system in the game. And I don't know if this is something that's exclusive to Dragon Quest XI, or generally if this is in any other JRPGs, but I like that you can change the battle speed of the turn-based events. So if you're grinding and building up those levels, you can just kind of zoom through it. Um, but also there's a really nice feature of kind of inbuilt tactics where you can kind of allocate what the rest of your party do automatically. This isn't something I tend to do a lot of because I feel like it does kind of take away the fun of the game and the control, but it is quite enjoyable as well for those moments where you are just kind of like grinding through a dungeon or something and you kind of just let the game play out. I haven't finished the game, I think I'm about halfway now, um, but from what I've been told it's quite a big substantial game, um, which is like at least 40 hours plus. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of get through it. It's not been one of those games where it's just been so overwhelming and difficult that you don't want to get through it. It's fairly manageable. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with Japanese RPGs, but I think it's a really accessible one to get into from what I've been told from RPG fans. I think one of the things that makes this game absolutely stunning as well is just how uh, lively all the environments are, in particular all the towns and stuff that you visit. I think they all have their own character and aesthetic and just a lot of energy and I think this was something that was kind of lacking in the Pokemon Switch game Sword and Shield. I just felt that those towns and overworlds were really really dull and boring and just empty but I think they've done a fantastic job with this game. Um, and the next game that I want to talk about, strictly speaking, kind of isn't a game but I did want to include it and that is Florence. Florence is an interactive story about a 25 year old. It's about her just navigating her life in her mid 20s, navigating her family, career, romance. It's a really relaxing game and the reason it's on this list in particular as well is that the music in this game is absolutely phenomenal. I absolutely fell in love with the soundtrack of this, it's so beautifully composed. I actually found myself going back to listening to the soundtrack even when I'm studying or cleaning up and stuff, it's just really, really peaceful. I really enjoy the art style as well, it's all these hand-drawn doodles. Correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I don't think there's a lot of TV shows and movies about people navigating their life in their mid-twenties. So this was a really nice, refreshing, realistic look at, I guess, yeah, life as a 25-year-old. I guess the only downside to say about this game is that it is about 40 minutes and it's more of an interactive story. I know it's also available on the App Store and the Google Play Store as well, I think for about three pounds or so. Um, I think it's definitely worth it. And the very last game that I want to talk about is, again, something that is probably not very cosy, and that is Fire Emblem Warriors. Fire Emblem Warriors is not a traditional Fire Emblem game. My camera just died. <laughs> so Fire Emblem Warriors is not the traditional Fire Emblem game, which I think is just a strategy turn-based RPG as well. But Fire Emblem Warriors is part of the uh, Warriors franchise, which is also referred to as, I think, Musou games. And if you've played anything like Dynasty Warriors or Hyrule Warriors, it's essentially the same thing in that one person in a team fighting a massive horde of other warriors, enemies, soldiers, whatever. Um, and when I mean a massive horde, I mean literally hundreds and hundreds. It's a really kind of basic hack and slash game. The reason it's there on my cozy games as a fighting game is that it's just, it's very mindless and very easy and it's just, Again, there's that feeling of something really satisfying of kind of clearing a battlefield. I haven't played any of the Fire Emblem games before, so I'm not too familiar with the characters, but I know that the story is kind of disjointed and that there's a lot of crossover between different storylines, which I know did upset some Fire Emblem fans. It's a really fun game to kind of just pick up and play a battle, and again, I often do it if I'm kind of like multitasking and maybe watching another TV show. It's just really, really cathartic to kind of just be kind of hammering these buttons mindlessly and just switching off as well. So thank you very much for watching. Those were some of the cozy games that I like to play. It'll be really interesting to know what you think of my cozy games. Um, if you've got any game recommendations yourself as well, please let me know. And if you want to follow what I get up to in between making videos, then please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter.